Hello, in this video, I'm going to give you five performance metrics that you need to know to be effective as a UX designer. I'm Dr. Chris Parker, and I'm gonna take you through the step-by-step -step so you can perform usability assessments and understand performance. So we can break this down into three categories. There are simple metrics that look at task success, does it work, and the time on task. So how long does it take? We have the advanced metrics of understanding the errors and the efficiency, which is the amount of work you, the user, puts into using your website or app. And then finally, we're thinking about the long-term impact of your design. So let's start from getting some something really easy, which is simple performance metrics. So task success and time on task. Task success is a really simple metric. So, and this is the most common one. So how, do you complete the task? You know, you know, you've got a start point, an end point, whatever it is, did you do it? So your example could be finding a summer dress on a fashion website which had red flowers. Okay, did you do that? Change your password on the user profile. Did you do it? You no, know, was there something in the design which meant you could not achieve that task? Simple yes and no. If anything has a no, this is a red flag, you need to fix it straight away before you go and look at anything more advanced it has to work. Task success is very commonly combined with the ThinkAloud protocol. The ThinkAloud protocol, quite simply, you are sitting at a computer using the app, website, whatever you are, you're sitting in a chair using your iPhone, whatever you're doing, and you're talking through what you're doing as you're doing it. So participants are asked to describe their thoughts and actions as they use the prototype. You video it, you record it, and then you're going to um, use transcription and just write down everything the person says and apply thematic analysis, which is coming up in a few videos time. Now, understanding task success is absolutely essential to get performance because if you can't do a task, there is no performance. So here's a really simple um, example of task success. We've got um, participant one managed to complete both tasks, no problem at all. Participant two did task one, participant three did task two. So we can really say that both tasks have an average success rate of about 75%. Now, there's something happening with um, these tasks. You need to understand out why. So we look at the videos, look at the transcripts, look at the thematic analysis, and we see that, well, there's a button that's hard to find. There's um, text that's hard to read. Whatever the people were talking about when they failed, that's telling us that this is causing the failure. So really, really simple metrics to use. It's a yes, no. Maybe you can take the average into percentages and just make sure that your app is working. Once it's working, you can go to the next level, which is just how long time takes. You know, time on task. So it's very similar to task completion. Uh, you could use the same kind of method of taking the average time to complete the task. The time itself is a little bit meaningless because what does a minute mean? Well, you want the task to get faster over time, not slower. So if you put a new design feature in or you redesign a website, does that make your task go faster or slower? Also, you can do analysis of your competitors and say, are your competitors' websites faster? Because you want to be faster than them. And maybe you've got a really great design, but they do something faster. So you need to think about simplifying your structure, reducing the number of buttons you've got, reducing the information, making action buttons clearer, all those items just to speed things up. Now, task time is a very good measure of efficiency because if you complete a task fast, generally you're not taking many resources. So as well as being as simple as just using a stopwatch, it's something you can just power through and do really well. Once you've thought about the simple measures of can you complete a task and the uh, time it takes, we can think about more advanced methods. So particularly the errors and a quantifiable efficiency. Now errors is quite similar to task completion, which is count counting the number of times the user makes a mistake on a website or app or you know, whatever we're designing. So you know, usability and errors are not really the same thing because um, bad usability is the cause and errors are the outcome. So every time a user makes an error, it's because the design is not good enough. The kind of thing you could do as an error could be pressing the wrong button, filling in the wrong form, 
You know, we've all put password in the wrong section now and then. You know, we've all gone to the wrong website, gone to the wrong address because we made a mistake. Why did we make a mistake? Because the path was not clear for us when we were using the product. We can see a very simple thing here about just counting how many error, um, errors were made on a page, put them on a bar chart. And so we see that, you know, design one, task one had an average of you know, five errors that was made. Um, maybe design two has two errors. So we see that um, design one is actually inferior all the way for task one, two, and three. But in task four, whatever that is, could be finding something or changing your account, task um, design two is much superior. So this tells me that design two is the design we should be taking forward as we're you know, testing them A, B, but we should be taking whatever process it happens in task four from design one and putting it into design two. So we're improving our work. This is a really simple way of showing things. And you just need to watch somebody as using your design, um, count down with a piece of paper what they're doing and when, and you'll find this is a very quick and easy way to check this. The last one is actually my favorite part of measuring performance, which is efficiency. Now, time, as I said, is a very effective and simple way of measuring this, but it's not really um, truthful. I mean, if somebody is hitting the keyboard constantly or hitting the mouse and going everywhere, it might take the same time as somebody who's just looking at a screen and wondering what to do. So we've got two different kinds of efficiency here. Um, so clicking something, pressing a button, flipping a switch, those are all measures of efficiency. So the steps you need to go through in measuring um, effort is firstly, think about what an action is. Is it gonna be clicking a mouse? Is it entering a form? Is it typing on a keyboard? Just think, these are the things that we're looking for. And then watch somebody use your website. And every time they do one of those actions, tick it off and create a tally. Record how many times those happened. And then you can make a bar chart of this, you can make a table of this, and you want to see that the amount of clicks, the amount of keystrokes, the amount of whatever you're talking about goes down as your design gets better because you're constantly redesigning and making different versions of your design. And you want to test your competitor. You want to make sure that the user has less things they need to do to achieve their task. So less effort is required. Um, I'm sure there's exceptions to this rule, but generally less actions is happier. Now, counting actions is the simplest form, but there's a better way of doing it, um, or a different way of doing it called lossness. Now, this part does take a small bit of maths, but don't worry, the maths is incredibly simple. And if you can use Excel, you can nail this. So here we have a website. And this is the structure of website. We've got the home page. From the home page, you get to your category pages. From the category pages, get to your product pages. So a simple shopping website. And obviously, it's more complex than this. You'd have a lot more than nine product pages, but we'll just go with nine for now. So the easiest way to get to a um, get to where you're going, the product, is just home page, category C, product C2. Right, simple way. But if you get lost in the website, you might go to category A, product A1, realize you made a mistake, backtrack through category A, back to the home page, head to category B, oh God, I made a mistake, back to the home page, and finally over to category C, and then the product you're looking for. So you've gone all over the place. So how can we take these two understandings, what the perfect route is and what the lost route is, and turn that into something that's quantifiable. Now, quantifiable in the same way that the number of clicks you make is quantifiable. Quantifiable in the same way that the time taken to complete a task is quantifiable. How can we do that? So we understand that our website is getting less lost over time, or maybe our website is less lost than the competitors. Well, you need three variables. We need N which is the number of different pages visited when performing a task. S, 
the total number of pages visited when performing a task. We need R, which is the optimum number of pages that must be visited to accomplish the task. So let's take that. So in our example at the bottom, how many different pages were visited? We've got the home, we've got category A, product A1, category B, category C, and product C2. So that's six. Then we need S, the total number of pages visited when performing the task. Well, that's home, category A, product A1, category A, home, category B, home, category C, product C2. That's nine. And then the optimum rule, what's the perfect number of pages that we could go through? Well, it's home, category C, and product C2. That's three steps. So we've now got the data we need. And here it is there. Six um, different pages, nine total pages, and three minimum pages. Now, at the top right is the formula, which you can use if you like maths, you're swimming with it. If you don't like maths, and all you need to do is type in that formula into Excel. So you see that B1 is number six, B2 is number nine, B3 is number three, B1 again is number six. So really you just paste this into Excel, put it in, and that will give you the lossness. I will link a calculator in the description of this video so you don't get lost. Now that gives us a total lostness of 0.6. Don't worry about the calculation part, just say, yep, that works by magic. Is 0.6 good? Well, no, because lostness wants to have a score of 0.4 and lower. 0.6 means people are getting lost. And if we have a look back at our page here, yeah, we can see it's gone from a simple website to getting very lost, even with such a tiny website. So a lostness of 0.6 is not that good. We need to improve the signs on the website, improve navigation, make buttons clearer, and make it just easier for the user to navigate and not get lost. Now, what about the next stage, longitudinal? So there's items over time. So learnability is something which not much software pays too much attention to. Think, when was the last time you used a user manual? You got some software and you checked out the how-to guide. Probably a long time ago or never, because lots of software is so simple as soon as you use it, you can just achieve everything you need to achieve, which is wonderful. But to make that happen, you have to simplify the software and you remove the advanced features. That's great for a starting person, but if you're working on advanced software, you want to have advanced commands, advanced tools. So advanced tools are gonna to be harder to use. You're gonna have more effort. You're gonna make more mistakes, can be slower. But as you get better at them, you learn them and your task time goes down. The errors goes down, your lostness goes down. So when you're making advanced software, it's okay to be bad at the start and get better. If your users are really tied in, you can do this. Give somebody your software to use, get them to use it, measure their task time, measure their lostness, measure whichever of those five metrics you like. Then give them a week to use the software. Come back, measure them again on the same tasks. Then give them another week and come back and measure them again. And keep doing this and you should hopefully see that those performance metrics start getting better. If that's the case, your software is good. If your metrics don't get better, that means that your software isn't teaching your user how to use it. They're not learning it effectively. So you need to design some way to help them understand, maybe tool tips, maybe some guides, maybe making items more obvious. So learnability is really important as the fifth measure of performance.